Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of City Skylines with me, CityZilla, and we are in our lovely city of Crater Lake today. We're going to be working on our downtown. Um, I wanted to jump into a couple changes that I made off camera, though. I ended up making a key wall for our little river here just because it's really going to tie into some of the ideas I have with this. I think we're going to be doing some key walls around this, and and I thought it just really cleaned up the, the river a little bit. Initially, I didn't want to do it because of how steep of a ledge this is, this drop right here. I just didn't feel like that was super realistic. But after kind of putting it in and it, the water level does raise up quite a bit over here, I thought it looked really good. And so I decided to keep it. I did end up receiving a comment or a suggestion on our roundabouts. And uh, this person had brought up how turning right, left, and then right onto the roundabout was just kind of really weird. And after thinking about it, I was like, you know what? It, it actually wasn't very realistic. I ended up doing it because I felt like it was more visually pleasing, almost like a drawing almost, but within the city, it would actually cause kind of an issue to where when you were approaching the roundabout, you'd have to brake and then turn right and then left. And it does kind of help with slowing cars down more, but I just felt like it was really unrealistic. It's not something that I think you would see in a real city. So I ended up going through and I uh, created these nice little slants on now. And so now when a car is approaching, they can slow down and they can already kind of see the roundabout. I did end up raising this roundabout as well. It was kind of low. Um, and we still are going to be doing something cool with these, like a monument or some sort of unique building in there. But I did end up going through and changing them all. And so I came over here and did the same thing, kind of messed around with the terrain a little bit and then uh, came over here and did the same thing. And so today we are going to be building out this lovely downtown area. And so what I'm thinking is we will I want to do something really cool here. And so I'm going to be pulling from a couple cities mainly from Chicago. I, I really enjoyed how Chicago, you had this line of tall buildings and then the whole waterfront area is just a giant park and they have a plaza, they have a, an amphitheater in there as well. And then they have a couple sculptures. Their famous one is the, you know, big bean. It's like a huge chrome kind of bean shaped sculpture, but it's massive and you can go underneath it. It's really cool, um, but it's right, literally Michigan Boulevard is the main boulevard. And on one side of the street, you have huge skyscrapers. And then on the other side is just a massive park and then their waterfront. And I just thought it was such a cool thing. And so I wanted to capture some of that vibe here. And because we are kind of a tropical map and because of my ideas with the canals, I was really trying to think about how I could tie in something like that and just create a little bit of interest. And so I'm going to go over what I'm going to do. And then because it is such an extensive build, I am just going to skip ahead. And so what I what I'm thinking is we're going to come in here and we are going to go into the bridges and piers, the simple seawall. And if you don't have this uh, content creator pack, this is definitely a good one to get. Um, it comes with a ton of stations that I use quite often. And then this key wall is just fantastic because it allows walking. It's the same key wall that we used in our uh, in our university area. And so what I'm going to do is create a seawall going all the way around this. And I'm just going to do a little section to to kind of show you guys what I'm thinking. And then we will end like that. And we'll probably still clean it up a little bit. But then what I'm gonna do is go over to the network multi-tool and I'm gonna choose this fancy new create parallel mode. And I really love this. This is a new feature for this mod, um, relatively new anyways. And so what you do is you, collect, you select the nodes. And so if it ends up on the wrong side like that, just go the opposite direction. And then what this is going to do is create another. So like if you have a key wall selected, it'll create a second key wall in parallel to the first one. And the reason we're going to do this is because what I want to do is create a little island. And then I want there to be a waterway going through and we'll probably create a little bit of a break. And so we'll hit enter. And then what that's going to do is just basically give us the layout for our little island. And then now all we need to do is go in and I think we're going to push this back just a little bit and we're going to go into the level terrain tool. And this is where it really starts to take a lot of time. And so I'm just going to go and explain it. I'm going to right click right here, push all the way back 
and go all the way around to here. And then I'm going to go into the water structures. And this is part of the extra landscaping tools. Kind of gives you some editing uh, features. It's actually down here, the water. Um, and then I have to play around with this water source a little bit and raise it up. But then I'm also going to create a second water source and I'm going to drop it down and I'm going to push it down here next to the entrance because we really want to make sure that water ends up coming in here. And my idea is that we're going to end up putting fairies and everything. And then what I want to do is tie in our metro. And since this road right here is almost parallel with the station, I think what we're going to do is a metro over road asset that I ended up getting. It's really cool. I'll end up putting a link in the description. But then we will tie it into our little island and we'll put two met monorail stations onto the island. And then what we're going to be doing is putting in paths and a bunch of landscaping. We're just going to make it into a really nice area for people to walk. And, and then on the intersection, we're going to be doing ferries and then a couple really cool bridges. And it's kind of funny because we're not uh, like an Arabian map at all, but it kind of makes me think of Dubai and kind of how they just do those crazy designs. And, and even though it's not super realistic for most countries, because spending that amount of money on something like this would be kind of unheard of. Um, it is just a really cool thing to do. And so it is something that I, I think looks really fun. And then, so once we have that leveled out, I'll end up having a place in the metros. And this is really where it's going to take a lot of time with these because of the ground and leveling these out. And so now that I've explained it, I am going to do a little bit of YouTube magic and I will be right back with you. Okay. So this is what I was thinking. Um, and it definitely took quite a bit of time to get it right. Um, Messing with water sources is kind of iffy. So I ended up putting the small one, like I was saying here, and then I ended up raising this one up quite a bit. And you can even see it's technically higher than a lot of the ground. Um, all that white is where the water level would be if it didn't have somewhere to go. And so um, the channel is obviously taking most of that away. And then this side as well, I had to make really high, um, but because it has somewhere to go, it doesn't really affect the water level too much, but it was just to get our little canal entirely filled up it. And then one of the main issues I had was with getting these level to where I could actually just have a flat surface. As I'm sure many of you who are familiar, doing keys on land creates a really uneven space. And so you end up with these kind of bumps that just don't work out really well. And so now that we have that, I wanted to kind of go over some of the features. I really like that we were able to make this canal in here. This is really what I was trying to go for. And um, I had talked about Dubai and a lot like Arabian states as well. And this is kind of what it reminds me of it. Those, those artificial islands that they make and even having the Metro, it's very kind of futuristic, um, but I think it looks really cool. And so now all we need to do is create kind of a road layout. And so I did want to create this front section as a park space. And then I want to extend our parkway over here and probably turn it. And so I actually leveled the land out a little bit. It wasn't entirely bumpy. I just wanted to create more of a clean slate for us with this downtown, especially if the city was spending this amount of money on it. And then one of the things we really need to do is create a freeway on ramp off ramp somewhere. And so I want to do kind of an above ground. And so what I want to do is dig out a hole basically and probably do some key walls, clean it up and we'll create an on ramp off ramp scenario in the middle of our downtown area. And so we might end up deleting this and kind of shifting it over. And so what I'm thinking for this road is I want to just bring it around and we'll probably turn it. Cause if we look at our access, we have this freeway coming up here. So we'll probably create an interchange maybe right there. And so if we were to turn our, our avenue, we could even shift it again this way and have it go into this open area over here. Cause I think this is really good land for us to develop, especially with these beaches. We'll be able to really do like maybe some beachside condos or maybe even some nightlife, like a casino or some leisure and tourism areas. Um, and so I think that is probably going to be our best bet. So have this come up here and turn and then probably shift that way and then we can still uh, kind of do some stuff with this though we do there's a really big hill right here and so I think maybe if we do maybe some hillside homes like maybe we could even dive into some mansion estates or something I think that could look good um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and draw in this road and then we will see where we go from there Okay, and so this is what I was thinking. I ended up drawing the road all the way around and then to make it level with the ground, I actually raised it up and then went into the network multi-tool and went to the slope terrain. 
And one of the neat tricks you can do with this is just raise up two nodes. So like these two, I rose up to be about level with it. You can see it's still a little bit lower, but then if you choose these as your first nodes and then you just kind of go all the way down, if you get a red piece, all it means is that you need to go back and kind of choose a node that's a little bit closer first, but then you go all the way down and you just hit enter. And what it does is it levels it all out from that height, that highest point. And so it's a really nice feature that you can use to kind of save some time. What I want to do is create a nice layout. And so we are going to be incorporating some trams in here as well. We are probably on the next episode going to be expanding at our tram network um, because we have that really nice tram hub. I want to make sure that we utilize that. And so I did want to take this road and just connect it up probably like right there. And then the goal is to create a road layout that curves around this because it is curved. It would be really hard for us to do square um, grid pattern in here. And so what we're going to do is just kind of curve it around, but I do still want to create some interest. And so we are going to go in here and I think we're actually going to choose a six lane road. Yeah, there you go. Six lane with decorated trees. I think that's good. And then I did use a, a road in here. So I think I'm going to turn off collision and then just go like that so we can upgrade it though. We don't need a six lane down there. I think it, um, it will be nice. And so I think now what we'll do is we'll come out like right here and then let's go ahead and create that curved road around. And so in order to kind of match the key wall, all I'm going to do is you see the road guidelines, those little circles with the line. What that tells me is that if I can line up the line to be perfect, so like if it's off like that, then I know I'm actually going a little wider than the key wall. But if I can line them up, then I'm creating a parallel road or parallel connection. Sometimes it's not perfect though. Like you can see that one's a little off, but this side is a little bit closer than the other one. And so we're just gonna follow that. There we go. We'll do the same over here. I think I'm going to favor the wide side because then we're going to turn this and have it terminate like right there. And then that way we can actually continue on this road and then maybe even do something fun there like a unique building or something. And then we do need to come in here and collision still off. So I can just upgrade that. I do want it to be on unmodded though. I don't want them to create uh, ground pieces right there. And then we do need to connect this up. And now we do need water and electric for these guys still. And so, but now we have that and what can we do? So maybe if we curve this guy in, so we'll follow the same guideline, but then we'll curve it in like right there. I think that looks good. So now we have a couple points of interest where it's a little bit farther away that we can create something fun or whatever we decide to do. And so now what we want to do is create a little bit of a grid pattern. And I do want to go off from these roads because those are so close. I don't like it as much, but I think it would still be important for us to get this connection in. One of the hardest parts with downtowns is just dealing with traffic. And so if you can make sure you got good access, a lot of times you'll, uh, you'll get it right. That looks pretty good. It is a little off on that one side, but I'm not going to sweat it right now. Um, and then I do want to go like that. And then I think we will choose a node like right here. And then we'll do the same thing, curve this in. And all we're doing right now is just creating access. So we want to create avenues for cars to go in different directions so that not all, the, all your cars go in the same direction, which is really most people's issues with traffic is has to do with everybody taking one route. Okay, so now what I'm thinking for this is we want to create our first one way, but we want it to be far enough to create a walking path in the middle. And so we're just a little bit too far. And so we're going to go back in here and I think it's about like right there probably. And we're going to go back into our one ways and see if we can get that one path. Yeah, you know what? That actually looks pretty good. And so we're going to do the same thing where we follow the grid pattern to make sure that we stay parallel with the the road because we want to create keep that pattern okay and so I think that is a pretty good little layout so we have the two one ways going opposite directions we have a separate arterial up here and then we have it all kind of terminating down this road but it leaves us the ability to expand over here and one of the things I was really unsure of is this road right here and I think it would be smart if we created access to this road over here 
um, so that we don't just have traffic funneling down this road or this other arterial. And so I think what we could do is either create a bridge or a tunnel. And one of the things you see in downtown areas quite a bit is tunnels, um, especially to create that access. And so I think this is gonna be something that we're gonna do. All right, and so now we have access from over here to over there, all the way over to this arterial. And so this is just another way that you can guide traffic to different areas. And so I'm gonna raise this up just so that we can get a little more flush with this. Um, I'm not super happy with how that isn't even with that road, but I think it looks good. And so I think this is actually exactly what I was trying to do. So we created a nice park space up here and then we created our road layout. And so now we just need to do some parks and then I wanna put in some ferries and do um, some metro lines and we'll be able to kind of see where we go from there. So what I'm thinking is we are going to go into our metro and I got these nice assets, these metro over road tracks and they are by Cold Rifting and they're really nice. Um, you gotta be careful with these though. And so whenever you're drawing them out, what I normally do is I'll go to where I want the stand to be. So I'll go like that. And then you see the little legs. You want to make sure that the legs land in an area where you want them to be. Because um, if you just kind of draw it across, a lot of times you'll end up with legs in really weird kind of spots. Um, and so we're not going to go too far with this. We're literally just going to go to the end. And then we can... Oh, it looks like... It's funny. I was kind of playing around with this. And it looks like I forgot that there. And so we are going to connect this guy up. And I don't want it to curve. Yeah, there you go. And then this side, what we're going to do is just have it go out. And I want it to be raised up. So I think we'll go like right there. And it looks like this side wasn't connected. That's weird. Sometimes though, um, it just doesn't, doesn't read it right. And so we'll go do the same thing. And I want this to be at an angle to where we can curve it and have it be smooth. And so what I'm going to do now is turn off snapping because I want to curve this in in a way that it's going to make sense. And so I think that's actually perfect right there. And then I am going to turn back on snapping because I really want this to be level with this other side. And there we go. And you know what? I think that actually looks really good. Um, I like how the curve came out. It came out really smooth. And then this actually opens up the ability for us to maybe turn this down and then go over to our university kind of upscale area or to continue this on this way for our other downtown or even this area, though I think we're going to primarily focus on tram for this area. And then I do want to create some paths before we start zoning anything in, um, as a lot of times if you just zone stuff in and then have to go through paths later, it just forces you to delete a ton of stuff. And I don't want to do that. And so we are going to create a bridge first. I'm going to turn off snapping. And so we're going to go like right there. And then I want to create like a nice curve to this. And so we'll probably go like right there. And then we will do the same thing on this side. And this is all going to be park space in here. And so I'm not super worried about. Yeah, there you go. I think that actually looks really cool. And then for this side, I want to do the same thing, but we have to be mindful of the of the monorail track. And so I, I anarchied that in, but you can kind of see it's clipping on this side. So what we want to do is just lower this down enough to where it's going to be safe for the people. And we can actually lower this side too. I didn't realize how tall that was. Yeah, you know what? I think that looks a lot better. It is much lower. Um, so then let's see if we can do it on the other side as well. We should be able to. I think we'll have to do the same thing though and kind of lower this guy down just a smidge. It doesn't need to be this tall anyways. And so I think right there is probably good. Yeah, we're low enough to where we're not clipping that. And so that that's the big important thing. And so I did end up putting a path along this as well. So it's kind of like a double path. Um, but it just allows people to walk from the key wall or the path into the monorail station. And so I thought it was going to be a really good addition for the area. And so I did want to create another access over here. And I kind of wish this was a little bit smaller. Maybe we'll make a path in here and, and drop that down. But I think for right now, we'll keep it like that. And so let's do another bridge over here. So we'll go like that. And then we'll come down and go like that. And then we'll make sure that this one's good. Yeah, that's actually much better. I think for some reason, it uh, the heights, uh, yeah, like you can kind of see this right here. 
It's because of those key walls. Whenever you're building on these key walls, it just creates some really uneven ground. Like you can see it even by shifting that, we kind of messed it up a little bit. This is one of the downsides to working with these is just the ground uh, doesn't work as well. I do want to lower this down too. So I'm actually going to go into the slope tool for the network multi-tool and then we're just going to hit this guy and then slope it in. So I want that to be a little more realistic of a slope. Yeah, that's much better. And so now it's really not too tall. It's something that you could see in a city. And so now that we have that, we have two path accesses. Let's go in here and create our path access for this guy. And so I do want to create our sideways ones going all the way across. And we want to make sure that we don't clip too many, too many squares in here. Okay, and so I think that is definitely an interesting path network. Um, again, we only did the curves just to kind of spice it up a little bit. And then it breaks up some of the zoning squares as well so that you get varying sizes and uh, but then a, an ability for you to maybe do some green belts and stuff and it just looks really cool. And so now what I want to do is go into node control and we're actually going to create crosswalks anytime that there is a connection in here. And you can kind of see that because these nodes were a little too close, it kind of got messed up there. And so you want to go back into node controller, hit that, do the same thing over here. And it does look like we're going to have, oh, no, we actually didn't get an issue over there. Then I want to come in here, go like that, go like that. And the reason for this is because we're just going to create accessibility for walking. More people will walk. And so that's super important. Even though we have those intersections, having these crosswalks in here would be really nice. And it is something that you see in downtown areas as well. Not all downtown areas though. Some downtown areas, it's only at a actual crosswalks, but then in others, you'll see these literally littered throughout the entire downtown area. It's kind of funny in um, California, you see a lot of those like in Santa Monica, there's literally crosswalks like every couple, like, I don't know, 20 feet or something. It's like all the time. It's actually, as you're driving, it's a little bit annoying, but it is just because they promote walkability so much. That's really what we're going for here. We want to promote walkability. And so we're going to go like that. we got that one. And so now, I mean, we got crosswalks everywhere now. And so we have made it so that it's really easy for people to walk even across these main arterials. It's kind of funny. We even put them in right here when they're not really as necessary. And so now let's go ahead and look at some services that we're going to need for this area. And so we don't have anything right now. So we know we're going to need a hospital and we're going to use the hospital just because um, this is a bigger area and it's just a little bit smarter and so maybe we can create a service center up here I think that would be really fitting and so we are going to jump into probably a two-lane road that we may upgrade this to a four lane and so I think that actually looks pretty good it is a little lower on this side but I think it's just because there's more space but now we have created an area where we can come in here and we will put the hospital like right there and then let's go in here and do the same thing so this will be like a city service center and i'm going to create some space in the middle so that we can do paths and kind of decorate it up a little bit um, since the city would be spending so much money on this it would be fair to assume that maybe they um, had decorated and so i do want to do these guys as well we are going to have residential and so i think we will do the child services like right here at the entrance yeah, I mean, we could put them in the middle too. Let's go ahead and see. It just doesn't really cover the entire downtown right there. Let's actually see about putting them down here. I think that could be interesting because these are um, medical facilities. It would be nice to have them in kind of a nicer area. And so maybe we'll put it like right there and then we can decorate those up and go back into our paths and just do some paths around it. So now, like if your child was sick or you needed to send a, a loved one to a retirement home or something, it would be right on the waterfront. It would just be really nice. I think this is a nice feature and we'll um, put some trees around it. Let's go ahead and do, we'll probably do some palm trees since we are kind of in a really tropical area with this blue water and everything. But then this would just be a really nice, nice thing to have. Um, nice amenity that the city built for these people. And it's a nice boost for the city too. And I think that's honestly, that's good right there. Cause I do want to leave the grass areas for that. And then let's see about putting some other services up here. So we could do our schools up here as well. 
because we are going to need like a high school. A lot of times high schools in downtown areas end up being kind of smashed in with everything else. And so let's kind of see if we can just fit the high school in somewhere. And you know what? I actually like that. I like how it's going to be kind of surrounded by tall buildings. And this is definitely something you see with inner city high schools. They typically don't have a ton of normal amenities that you would see for high schools. They normally are kind of smashed in there. And then I think for um, like sports and stuff like that, they end up using nearby park spaces for it. I'm not really sure. I've seen a couple downtown high schools where it's just the building. Um, though I think in some of them you do end up having like ball fields and everything still. But then I think up here we can do the elementary school um, because with younger children, you definitely don't want it to be inner city as much though i think in downtown areas you still do have them inner city but let's go ahead and put this up here and i do want to do like a park next to it since it is an elementary school hey you know what i think that looks pretty good i really don't like how all these ended up being right next to each other but we're gonna really kind of market it as as a city service kind of center the city decided when building out this downtown area that they wanted to put all these next to each other because it'd be easy for them to kind of corroborate too. like a lot of times um, emergency services from fire departments go to go to uh, car crashes and stuff and they end up having ambulances as well and so it'd be easy for them to kind of coordinate or if like somebody who is a criminal ends up in the hospital then the police department would end up going over there and then having the elementary school next to the police station makes it a little bit safer and so these would all be kind of selling points for the area and then what I do want to do is put in some path access and we're going to basically fill this whole thing up with packs with paths because we want to promote these workers to walk as much as possible. I think that actually looks pretty good. Um, I do want to go in though and put in some trees and we're going to use the palm trees. So we're going to go like that. And then I think we will just follow this road all the way down. I think that looks good. It's not overdone. Um, it's definitely on the light side, but I think for city services, it's just easy. Um, I could go in and decorate it and do even more parking lots, but a lot of these assets have built-in parking lots. And so I think this would be good, especially for a downtown area. And so now I think what we'll do is go ahead and zone this in, and then we will work on our waterfront park. Um, and actually I want to create um, our metro lines as well before we forget. So we're going to go up here and we're just going to click these guys. And this is just going to be a loop. It basically picks people up from the downtown and goes over here. And so it's going to be good. And then we can unpause it. Um, we do need to do water pipes real quick though. Okay. And so we have water pipes going all the way through. We do need to connect up electricity. Um, so I think we'll actually go back to pausing it and just zone this in. And so the idea behind this is we will have commercial on just this front side. So we'll go high density commercial on just the front ring on the main street. And then the rest will be residential and office space. Cause a lot of times in major downtowns, it's really what it is. They do have mixed use though. So even like tall residentials will end up having commercial on the bottom floor. But because we don't have mixed use in this game, um, this would be a more realistic approach because these commercial buildings would be like really tall, like department stores or places for you to go and purchase things. And then in downtowns, you typically don't have tall buildings like that scattered throughout an entire downtown. So what we're going to do is literally just scatter office buildings and residential um, because a lot of these, they would just be plots of land that somebody had purchased and decided to build into something else and so they would be scattered all throughout and there we go and so i think that is probably good for office space um i don't want to go too heavy i definitely want this to be primarily um residential just because we need it i think in real life we would probably have more that's what i'm gonna do more of these guys um, especially with it being a downtown you would have mostly office and so we're actually going to do this whole front rows office just because it's right next to that commercial and there we go. And so now the office space gives a little bit of a buffer for the commercial, but then also we can kind of get those varying heights with uh, the transition from commercial to residential to office space. And I think that's pretty good. And so now I'm just going to go in here and use my paintbrush tool and, and fill in the rest as high density residential. 
Okay, and so I think that's pretty good. We have a nice scattering of office throughout the residential, but then we have this front row of high density commercial, which would be really nice. And then what we could do is just go in and, and do a couple as low density commercial, just kind of on the corners. Like these would be your small like gas stations or uh, like corner markets. Um, and there are things that you see on uh, little corner areas like the, especially since we don't have mixed use, this would be something that um, the city would definitely do. And there we go. And so now we have a little sc scattering of low density commercial in there. And we are gonna do a park on this front side, but I think by doing a couple plazas, it would also be just a little more realistic. And so we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna do just a couple. We really don't need a lot. And you can kind of see that we're gonna be clipping that, um, that path a little bit. And so I think we're just gonna do a, a few in areas where maybe we can get away without clipping the path. Yeah, there we go. Not too extreme. I ended up turning on um, Anarchy just so that the path still kind of goes through it. It would be like somebody can just walk through the, the plaza, which I think is a little more realistic. Um, and so I think that's pretty good. We can unpause it now and then we'll do our electricity real quick. And I'm just doing it like this for right now because um, it just needs to connect up as we build out the city. We're obviously not going to have to worry about that as much. And so let's just sit and watch it kind of grow for a minute and see if we come up with any issues, anything we need to address right away. Okay, so I think this looks really good and it's kind of funny because of our increased land value over here with the waterfront and then the elder care and the childhood care, a lot of these buildings have already upgraded fully. And so a lot of these commercials like this one's kind of tall to already at level three. And so I do want to paint in a district for this area. And so we're probably just going to go like this. And then if any of you guys have any fun names for this, um, anything like rock related or anything, I still do have some names um, that have already been suggested. And so I may end up just using one of those, but if you guys come up with something cool, just let me know. Uh, it's kind of funny. We let it grow out. And after kind of looking at some of the buildings, I think I would rather if it was the self-sufficient buildings because they come out a little more futuristic. And I think being right next to the waterfront with this whole elevated Metro thing, it would just kind of look a little cooler. And so we're going to go in here and we are going to hit on hit the residential specialization. And then if you have the Green Cities DLC, then you'll be able to select self-sufficient buildings. And what this is going to do is it's going to first off pretty much get rid of all of our residential, which really is terrible. But it's going to rebuild them as uh, kind of more futuristic high rises. I think they look a lot cooler. You get um, like vertical gardens, you get a lot of sol solar panels and you get a lot of really tall buildings, too. But they they still look cool. I mean, even like this one, it's still like a standard building, but it has a lot of these like checker pattern glass and they just look a little more futuristic. And I think for the area, it's going to be a little more fitting. And so now that we have kind of hooked up some electricity, um, we are going to need to figure out something for these guys. I do want to pause the game, go in here and then delete these lines. And then we will go in here and just redraw them in. And we'll just go like right there because now it's all connected. And then the only things that we still kind of struggle with is just these two sections right here, which really kind of sucks. I think we'll end up doing, we'll go in here and see if we can use the little power boxes. So that might be our trick. So maybe we'll go like right there. We'll go right there. And then maybe we'll add one right there. Let's see if that connects it up. Yeah, it does. And so now we can go in here and delete this, which is just fantastic. And then we'll do the same thing on this side with the little power boxes. I could even do um, a tsunami buoy, but I think by having the buoy like right in that little canal, it would be even more unrealistic than us placing these little <laughs> power boxes. But as long as it connects, that's really what we're what we're going for here. And we can already kind of see we're having a little bit of a backup over here, and it's just because this is the main road in. Um, I do need to kind of slope that a little more too. 
Um, and so I'm going to go into traffic manager, choose the priority signs, and then I'm going to just turn this into a yield so that these people can continue on. And then what I'm going to do is give priority to this road. And what that does is if I hold shift, it literally highlights that entire road and then puts yield signs on all the roads kind of connecting to it. And then I want to do the same thing with these guys. Because they're arterials, we would want roads connecting to them to yield to them. And then I'm because I did that, it did mess up the initial yields for this main road. So I'm just going to go back in and re-click that. And so now all the roads coming onto this main road have to yield or give way to the main road, which would be a little more realistic and allows the traffic to just continue flowing. And so I did want to go in and paint in a park area for this front section. And so we're going to go like that and we're going to come all the way around. And then we're going to do that middle section too, because I want that to be a part of the park. And there we go. And if you guys have a fun name for the park, like Waterfront Park or Crater Lake Waterfront Park, just let me know. Um, I think it'd be really fun to incorporate some more uh, viewer ideas. And so we do need a main gate for this. And I think maybe like right around here, maybe even right here, since it's in between that little guy, I think that could actually be good. We are going to turn back on collision, though. And then we'll go like right there and then we can come back into our pavement path. And I'm using the pavement paths because bicycles can use them as well. Um, whereas a lot of the other paths bicyclists can't use, which is kind of dumb, but it's just something that the game kind of has. And so I do want to go in here and we could do some little plazas. I think that could actually be interesting. So let's let's see how it looks first. So you know what, I actually really like that. It gives th this little ledge over here and I think it um, creates a little interest. So I think we will do a couple of those. Not a lot, I just want to add in a few. Maybe we'll add in right one right here as well. No, you know what, we're gonna keep it like that because I want to come in and do gazebos. Yeah, because I really like how the gazebos create like a seating area and it's just a really nice thing to have within parks. And then let's see, we could do a cafe as well. I think this would be really nice. Maybe we'll do a cafe like right there and then we'll do one over here as well. Yeah, you know what, I think that's perfect. And then we're just gonna do some bathrooms because restrooms would definitely be something that you would need <laughs> within this area. Um, it would kind of suck to not offer any bathrooms. People would probably be really upset. And then let's do just probably two info booths. Um, and what this would do is it just provides uh, some information on the like where where the gazebos are may, maybe or the plazas so that people could get like easy access to like a map maybe. And then it does help to increase lane value as well. And so I think that's actually pretty good. I do want to go in and do um, some light landscaping. I think we're just going to do palm trees since we're right off the water. And then I'm not gonna do any foliage or anything because the grass would be part of the features here. Yeah, there we go. Not too complicated, not too intense. And then I think we're going to keep the opposite side without palm trees, but maybe we'll kind of draw them in and just see how it looks. You know what, I actually think it looks a lot better with the palm trees on both sides. And then because this one does clip over here, we do need to go like that. But I think that looks pretty good. It's not overly done, but then what we can do is connect our little paths up just in a couple areas and then do some more gazebos which i think would just be great especially on this little island it would just be so cool to kind of like visit with the kids and and i think that's a little too crazy we will go in here to just delete those but i think that looks pretty good um it is still connected to that path but i like how it's in the middle i think that looks really cool and we do need to connect them up with power and so we are just going to come in here go like that go like that and so I actually really like that. It's not overdone, but it cleans up the area a little bit. And so we are gonna just do the same thing over here with the palm trees, but I do want it to follow the coastline. I think that is pretty good. And I want to probably leave in the rest empty because it would just be green space for people. Um, but I think we will maybe just add in a couple trees for some shade. And so I think we're going to go and find just a big green tree. We'll probably choose this big tree. Yeah, and you know what? I think that's pretty good. It just provides a little shade and a little bit of contrast for the grass. Um, because again, the big grassy areas would be the selling point for this. People would just be kind of laying down in the grass and having a picnic or something. But I think this looks really good. And the new um, self-sufficient building should have came in. Yeah, it looks like, I mean, we got 
couple like this one's got a rooftop garden which just looks really cool and then we're getting a lot of these checkerboard ones which are nice but they're just really clean buildings like you can see this one's got wood paneling on the side and then different glass kind of designs and and then these ones got solar panels on top which is just really cool and and I think this looks really good and I like how this turned out. I think this is fantastic. On the next episode, we will be building out our freeway entrance right here. And I got a really cool design, like we'll end up doing um, some key walls and then we'll have an on-ramp off-ramp where it kind of goes down. And then we will continue on our same pattern over here, but with probably some more office space and commercial just because it's going to be right next to the freeway. And then we will end up filling in some of these spaces as well. I haven't decided yet with maybe commercial or something along those lines. But if you guys have a cool idea, just let me know. And then I think for this area, we will end up turning into another low density um, residential, though we could just do mid rises as well, like maybe some apartment buildings or something like something we did over here where they're not super tall buildings, they get limited to level three or four. So they're still a little bit taller, but they're not as tall as we're gonna get in here. I think this was the vibe that I was going for. Like how you have, um, this is exactly how Chicago is too. I like how some of the bridges are elevated too. Um, I do wanna go in and just fix some of these though, as this would be kind of unsafe. And there we go. And I like how we got our Metro set up. Let's go ahead and look at the lines real quick. So we just got one. It looks like it only has two vehicles. Let's go ahead and pump that up to four because this is a downtown. We know that it's going to be pretty congested. And you can see a lot of people are waiting at this one. And so we uh, definitely wouldn't want to leave people waiting for too long. And I really like how this looks alive. I think this is just so cool. I think we, we did good with the park by not overdoing it, um, but I really this is my favorite part of it is the road because um, this is just like Chicago these buildings would definitely be a little bit taller but unless we did the IT um, it's gonna be kind of hard to get that it's kind of interesting I wonder if I didn't have collision on for that because those rocks should be there same with that bush but I think this looks good and we're not having any traffic we got city services our land value is pretty good, especially along here. And once these start to upgrade even more, we're going to have some really good areas. And then we do have good accessibility for schools. Um, and we do, we need to kind of connect up our university to mass transit because right now it would be kind of hard for these people to get over there. And it does look like our university doesn't have enough capacity now, though. Oh, it looks like maybe we forgot to do water pipes over here so let's look at this guy so we're still pretty low on students we have enough academic works but in order to get to level four we need 1200 students and so i definitely think um on the next episode we're going to be focusing on transit we're going to build that freeway entrance right there but then i have a really cool idea i was thinking extending our tram lines down the middle of these and then moving our paths to the side so I think this whole downtown area turned out pretty good. Go ahead and let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help me out a lot and I super appreciate it. Um, and I'll catch you on the next episode.